You can render volumes in Slicer using the volume rendering module. You see I currently have a volume loaded in that's visible in the slice views. However, it's not showing up in 3D. That's because I haven't rendered it yet. To render a volume, you'll go to the modules menu and select the volume rendering module. I have it pulled up in the left right here. First, you'll want to make sure the volume you want to render is selected in this top menu. I only have one volume in the scene, so it will be selected automatically. Next, you will just click the eyeball next to the volume. That will make your volume appear in this 3D viewport. Now, one thing you'll notice is you will probably have VTK CPU ray casting as the default. If that's the case, your volume will probably look something grainy like this. I highly recommend working with Slicer on a computer that has a GPU, so you can use the GPU ray casting, which tends to look much better. Now I'm going to switch to the 3D only view so we can get a closer look at this 3D rendered volume. I'm navigating this 3D view by holding down the left mouse button and dragging to rotate. You can also hold down the middle mouse button to pan, and you can use the scroll wheel to zoom. A useful trick to note is that if you get completely off-centered from your volume, such as this, and you need to recenter it, you can just click this little button in the upper left. It may still be a little zoomed out, but we'll see once I zoom in, I'm completely centered on my specimen. Some other useful tools in the volume re rendering module are this crop function. If I check enable and then display ROI, which stands for region of interest, I get this box around my specimen. I can pull the handles and crop the specimen to wherever I like and then I can see inside the anatomy on that point. So for instance, I might want to crop to just this tooth. You can click fit to volume to reset that. You will also be able to adjust the ROI in the sliced view, which can be useful if that's an easier way to see your specific anatomy. The other thing you'll see is the shift function. This basically tells Slicer what the lowest density pixel voxels to render are. You'll see if I shift it all the way down, it's going to render the entire volume, including the air. However, as I start to shift it up, the air will no longer be rendered. And then as I shift it up even further, even the matrix and then the fossil itself will stop being rendered. Finally, there are some advanced options for display. These are really mostly useful if you want to create some especially nice figures to work with. For some reason, it starts out very zoomed in on these graphs. You'll have to zoom all the way out like this. And basically what this is showing is the different opacity levels and colors for each density. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could change this very base color, say red. Oh. And then as I adjust, you can see that those lightest densities I have showing now are turning red similar idea with the opacity. If you want to be able to say see through and see the roots off the tooth on your rendering, you could adjust the opacity down in there. One final thing to note is that both this volume properties that you create and the annotation ROI will be separate objects in your slicer scene. So if I hop back to this data tab we've looked at before, You'll see I have this annotations list. And then if I click save, you'll see I have an option to save the volume property. So it's useful to remember that those are separate objects.